Okay, let's uh, take a look at the weak law of large numbers. Yeah? So let me um, give you the, the context. Yeah? We have a population and there is a mean. Uh, the population could be um, all the males in Singapore. Yeah? And the random variable could be the height. So you have, you can calculate the average height for Singapore. But instead of going, you know, to each door and ask all these six million people how high they are or tall they are, basically what we can do is we can do a sample. And from the sample we can make projections to the population and that's basically uh, what, what a big chunk of statistics is for. Yeah? So we have a population mean that we don't know. Yeah? And we have a sample mean. So we have a set of random variables. One could be height, uh, one could be something else. Yeah? And these random variables are independent and identically distributed. Independent means that the decisions you make for x1 has no influence on x2. Identically distributed, you can assume that all of these are Gaussian. Yeah? So, the sample mean yeah, is the sum of the means of all these random variables. And since it is a sum of random variable, random variables, the sample, uh, so, sorry, the mean is also a random variable. Yeah. The sample mean is a random variable and if n is large enough, the sample mean will converge to the population mean. Yeah. Um, this is important, so let's, let's look at an example where an experiment uh, is to do 100 coin tosses. Yeah. Uh, and we will repeat that experiment, so 100 coin tosses, another 100 coin tosses, and so on. The population mean is 50%. Now we know that from experience, if it's a fair coin, it's going to be 50%. Now if we're going to do all these repetitive experiments, what we can do is calculate the sample mean for each of, ex of the experiments. So at some point you can have 55 plus 47 plus 52 and so on. Yeah? And you divide by the number of experiments. Now what we say is that if, if n is large enough that the sample mean will converge to the population. So let us uh, take a look here. The sample mean now equals the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 and so on till the expected value of xn divided by n. Okay? That is because the random variables are independent. Yeah. Now, the expected value of x1 is actually the expected value of x. Yeah. So actually I can change the 1 by i. Yeah. So that's that's the same thing. So that means that this can be written as n times expected value of x divided by n and that is the expected value of x. Okay? So we just proven the weak law of large numbers. Interesting to see is what happens to the variance, the sample variance. Sample variance equals the variance of the individual random variables x n Okay, divided by n squared. Why n squared? Well, we see that the variance of alpha x equals alpha squared 
variant of x. Huh? And you've seen that just a couple of videos ago. So now, we also know that the variance of x1 is the same as the variance of x. So we have n times the variance of x divided by n squared. So that means that the variance of x equals sample sample variance equals the variance of the population divided by n okay so this shows you also that the more you repeat your experiment the spread of your data will be reduced by a factor n and this is quite a nice uh, a nice outcome